Here we go. Problem 1727 from Giancoli. I'm not sure why I've inflicted this on myself, but here we go. It says in the Bohr model of the atom, you have an electron, shown in blue here, that orbits a proton. Each of them have charge E. This has Q equal to minus E. And this has Q equal to plus E. Uh, it gives us the size of the orbit. So this is R. And it's a circular orbit. This is the Bohr model. It's not actually the one we use now, but that's what we're using for the problem. Now, at the end of the problem, it says to give all these answers in electron volts and in joules. I'm going to skip that. I'm just going to give it in electron volts because that's easier. If you want to convert, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. So there you go. Knock yourself out. Part A asks us, what is the electric potential at the electron's orbit due to the proton? So if you remember, you have a positive charge. You will create a potential that goes like 1 over the distance that you are away from the charge. So V equals K times the charge over the distance that you are. As you get closer and closer, you're dividing by a smaller and smaller distance, and V blows up. It goes to infinity. So the potential is equal to K times E, the charge on an electron, divided by the distance. All right, K is 9 times 10 to the ninth Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. E is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And I divide by this R distance, which is 5 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. First thing to do will be to take care of units. One of the coulombs cancels along with one of the meters. Newton meters is a joule, and you divide by coulomb. So the units are joules per coulomb. Now let's take care of the numbers out front. We've got 9 times 1 and a half, a little more than 1 and a half, so let's call that 15. Divide by 5 and we get 3. So 3 times, now let's take care of the powers of 10. 10 to the 9th times 10 to minus 19th is 10 to the minus 10. We have 9 minus 19, so that's minus 10. Now we need to add 11, so times 10 to the 1, which equals 30 volts. Part B asks us to find the kinetic energy of the electron. Now this is not simple, because it seems like they don't give us enough information. The key here is to recognize that this goes around in a circle. And if you remember from 105, there's a very special form of, the, of Newton's second law for this. It's the mass times the centripetal acceleration. The C reminds you that it's a circular motion. Okay, the force that's causing this is the attractive Coulomb force. And so I can write it down. It's K times E times E over R squared. That is the plus E and the minus E attractive force from the proton and the electron. And there's another thing that we need to remember. This, is, this problem is hard because it uses so much from 105. The centripetal acceleration can be written as V squared over R. Now you may ask, why do we care isn't that just adding a new variable that still doesn't give us the kinetic energy? If you remember, the kinetic energy looks like, I'll write it in, say, purple, 1 half m v squared. And <clears throat> the motivation for writing down this was because I know the kinetic energy has an mv squared in it. 
So writing, rewriting this as mv squared allows me to get closer to having kinetic energy over here. I'll write it in purple when I get there. Uh, one of these r's can cancel. And we have k times e squared over r is equal to mv squared. Well now, if I divide both sides of an equation by 2, I get the same thing. So 1 half mv squared is equal to ke squared over r, uh, 2r. So I need to divide both sides of the equation by 2. This is my kinetic energy. Since this is the kinetic energy, the thing that it's equal to must also be the kinetic energy. So it says, what's the kinetic energy? We've got Ke equal to K, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter per coulomb squared times uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs squared. Divide all of that by 2 times 5 times 10 to minus the 11. This squared, 1.6 squared, is 2.5. It's actually 2.6. It's 2.56, close enough. Um, 10 to the minus 19 squared. You just multiply the exponent by the power that you're raising it to. So that's 10 to the minus 38. All right, I've got 9 times 2 and a half. 2 times 9 is 18, plus a half of 9 would take me to 22.5. Let's just call it 23. And we divide by 2 times 5, which is 10. I've taken care of all of the numbers. Now I need to do powers of 10 times 10 to the... All right, let's do this out here. We've got plus 9 minus 38 from the e squared term and then I need to uh, add 11. 9 plus 11 is 20 minus 38 is minus 18. Okay and the meters, oh that was meters squared so one of the meters cancels with this meter one of the, both of the coulombs cancel out both coulombs squared and this is joules. Okay, I lied. Not all of these will be in electron volts. So this is 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Part C. Part C says, what is the total energy of the electron in its orbit? Well, to do that, we need to find out what the potential energy is. The total energy is going to be the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. So the potential energy is the charge on the electron times the voltage. And from part A, we know that the voltage is 30 volts. So the potential energy is E times 30 volts, which equals 30 electron volts. Okay, the kinetic energy we just found, unfortunately it's in joules, let's convert it to electron volts. So it's 2.3 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. And if we divide that by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules per electron volt, so I'm just bringing the electron volt up at the top. The joules will cancel, and I'll get my answer in electron volts. All right, 2.3 divided by 1.6. This is about 3 times 8, and this is about 2 times 8. So that's 3 over 2 times 10. This is minus 18, but I need to add 19. So that takes me to 1. So that equals... 
1.5 times oh, in electron volts times 10 to the 1 electron volts which equals 15 electron volts all right <clears throat> let's look at our total energy now total energy oh I made a big mistake Q here is minus E and so I get a potential energy of minus 30 volts I didn't catch it until I was just about ready to combine these and I, I actually know the answer because I know the ionization energy of hydrogen but the total energy is equal to kinetic plus potential the kinetic is 15 electron volts and I need to add the potential which is minus 30 electron volts which equals minus 15 electron volts of total energy and it says what's the ionization energy well we just found it actually so this is the easiest part they've asked mostly they're just asking us to recognize that this this electron is sitting in a well and where it's sitting okay here's zero it's sitting at this place where we are 30 volts below zero so it's got minus 30 electron volts of um, of potential energy but it is moving in here it's got 15 electron volts of kinetic energy and so the the ionization energy is just equal to you need 30 electron volts to get it out but you get back 15 of them because you had 15 of kinetic and now you'll have zero of kinetic at the top you look at this it's just the same as the total energy it's 15 electron volts now it's positive because the way this is defined is how much energy you need to put into the system to remove the electron from the well and have it not moving very far away from the nucleus